right, man. So you got your 3.6 Pentastar, right? You get online, you, you see all the V8 guys, and you know, you, you hear the amazing sound those cars make. First and foremost, you cannot replicate that sound of a V8. We're going to go ahead and make that clear. There is no video, no nothing uh, that you can look at and follow and make your V6 sound like a V8. It's not possible. So let's just get that out of the way, right? However, well, you know, we talking about the power. Yeah, you can get a decent bit of power out of this. Now I know most folks, if you ask, hey, what can I do like in the forums? If you ask how can you get more power out of your V6, the number one answer is gonna be trade it for a 5.7. That's gonna be the answer you get. Um, I'm not gonna give you that answer because, I mean, just on, uh, if we're gonna be honest, the 6.4 only makes, I'm not 6.4, uh, the 5.7 only makes 64 more horsepower. It, in the 300 variant. I'm not sure about the charging challenge. I don't know the horsepower numbers for those, but it's only like 60, 60 something more horsepower. Right now, you do get a lot more torque. Uh, but in my particular case, right? Again, I bought my car in 2019, brand new. $26,000 is what I spent on this car, brand new, right? I started modding it. Um, wanted more power You know what I mean And I looked into trading it However at the time A brand new Chrysler 300 With the 5.7 Was going for $51,000 At my local dealership I'll try to see if I can get um, A picture of the particular car But it's pretty much the same same car as I have, except it has the 5.7 and it had all of the options, every option, right? Way overpriced. No fucking way am I spending $50,000 on Chrysler anything. They don't make something that's worth 50 grand. Let's just be honest. Um, well, at least not in the US. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, trading it isn't an option. I don't want a Charger. I don't want a Challenger. So. I was like, you know what? My car is paid off. I really don't want to get rid of it. What can I do, right? So I start looking into the power adders. You know, there's the um, Sprint X supercharger kit, the RIP supercharger kit. I've seen some people, you know, like retrofit turbos and, and a couple different things on in, in the forums. Um, however, just from my own research, it appeared that the RIP supercharger was the most safe route. And you could also get the most power um, in comparison to Sprint X. And then I'm not sure what it, what, what, you know, if you do turbos, I'm sure you probably can get more power out of turbos. But um, yeah, wasn't interested in taking that route. So I was really looking at Sprint X or RIP. And it was like everyone agreed that the RIP would be better for the money. So we went ahead, we got the RIP supercharger and, um, you know, went ahead and got it put on, man. So the initial dyno test in my car, when and talking about stock, made like 265 to the wheels, something like that. Um, it was either 264 or 265 or something uh, to the wheels. Now, mind you, this motor makes 300 at the crank. You got your good drivetrain loss, whatever, whatever. Puts it at um, 265. So, get the supercharger on. The first run um, after installing Rip's tune, it made about 380 and it ran like complete shit. Um, so obviously the tuner did his thing, uh, got it up to 442 to the rear wheels. Well, actually, <clears throat> cause see, I didn't disclose this. So the he actually got it to 471 to the rear wheels, but it was running like complete shit. So he 
I, I detuned it, I guess you would say, um, to get it to back to a place where it was safe. Um, and that landed us at the 442. So, very comfortable with it. I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever. However, for those of you who are debating getting one of these, I would say before you even spend the money, make sure you have you have a tuner in your area that knows what the hell they're doing. Um, that can have your car running like normal. You know what I mean? Uh, because that's that's the biggest part. You know, the install that that's nothing. It's nothing. Um, it's the tuning actually having it tuned properly to where the car will remain reliable and actually perform the way Rip uh, has designed it to perform. You know what I mean? Not only should you get that big power gain, you should also be gaining um, fuel economy. I think about one to three miles per gallon gain. You know, obviously it's going to depend on your car and the way you drive it and you know things of that nature but uh, I definitely saw the the difference in fuel economy uh, probably about two I'd say uh, I was used to getting you know anywhere from about 28 to about 31 and then now the car sees about somewhere between 30 and about 33 miles per gallon on the highway so can't complain about that um, at all you know what I mean? So, if you have a tuner in your area, I would say 100% go for it, man. Uh, the kit itself is 6,200 bucks. Obviously, not it's not cheap. Um, 6,200 bucks for the supercharger kit and the install itself. Now, this is going to vary, obviously, from shop to shop, most likely location to location, but. Um, for, I paid fourteen hundred for the install, and then about another eight hundred uh, in tuning costs. So expect to spend from the kit to the tuning about, I would say, eight grand is what you should be looking to spend. Now, that's when your situation would come into play. You know, would it? Would it make sense for you to trade your car? Maybe get a 6.4, you know what I mean? Or, or what? I, I honestly don't think you should trade it for a 5.7. Um, unless you want the sound. Obviously, if you want the sound, go right ahead. I, trust me, you won't hear nothing from me uh, about that. But if it's power you're looking for, you're not gonna get it from the 5.7 because if you get the 5.7, you're gonna have to dump thousands of dollars into it to get more power out of it as well. You know what I mean? So, whereas you can get the RIP Supercharger and it'll put you right at about, you know, the same power level that you can get from a 6.4. You know what I mean? And it may be the cheaper option than trading your car. It just depends on what you're willing to trade for. Me, personally, I wasn't trading a car that I bought brand new for a used 5.7, you know, that, you know, may or may not have been dogged out while I had it. Like, if I traded my car, because again, I, I bought it brand new. I trade my car, I'm only trading it for something else new. You know what I mean? Um, and again, I'm the only owner of this thing, so I know exactly what it's, you know, how it's been cared for throughout, uh, you know, its life so far. So that's where I was. You know, if you don't mind trading, you know, you let's say you got a, a 2020, you know, vehicle with the 3.6 and you want to trade it for like a 16 17 something with a 5.7 that's gonna be cheaper and you know may make sense for you that go right ahead go right ahead you know if that's your thing i said go for it but uh just that that didn't work for me didn't work for me um you know not only is the the supercharged 3.6 is it's like it's different man you know like I said, it's not a ton of people with it, you know, and, and it, it's cool, you know, it's, it's cool in its own way. Yeah, it doesn't make all that cool ass noise that the 5.7 does, you know, but obviously, it's a, you know, it's a V8, 
86, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I would say get it. I would say get it. If all those things line up for you, I would say 100% to get it. Like, uh, I do not regret my decision of putting this supercharger on here in the slightest bit. You know what I mean? So, uh, with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the uh, head mount and uh, let y'all see this thing in action. You know. All right, man. We about to merge on this highway. I'm gonna give it a little juice, man. Let y'all see. All right, so get to about 50. As you can see, man, it, it gets going. No problem whatsoever getting going. You know. And then everything is normal when you know when you need it. So you know we're at 80. Want to go into cruise control? Boom! She's in cruise control. It'll shift up to eighth gear. No different than it did normally. You know what I mean? Hey man, I hope this camera is actually pointed where y'all can see the speedometer and shit, man. And I could get to that uh, that stoplight up there without anyone being uh, ahead of me. Oh, I can. All right, so when this light gets green, man, we're going to go for it. We having like some really good fucking boost weather down here too. It's like 50 something degrees this morning. Um, well, it's probably 60 something by now, but it was 50 when I woke up, which is amazing for <laughs> for the supercharger, man. Uh, yeah, we, we, we gonna get some races in pretty soon, man. Uh, we got uh, an event coming up on the fifth either 15th or the 16th of uh october and uh we're gonna get to race some guys man to actually see what this thing can do against all of these v8s man you know but uh yeah so like i have my car in normal drive it's not in sport or anything um and I typically keep it in just normal drive just because sport makes it a lot more touchy than uh, it makes the, the, the throttle a lot more touchy than I really care for when I'm driving in town. So, you know, I just keep it in normal, normal drive and, and then take my traction off and I can have plenty of fun just like that, you know. You know, obviously I know most folks are gonna wanna drive theirs in sport all the time, but I feel like not driving it in sport actually helps me like not burn as much gas because I'm less tempted to, to really get on it every, you know, every time I can. Even under you know normal acceleration, like you can't even hear the supercharger at all, man. It's uh, 
it feels no different than you know if you were driving a bone stock 3.6 you know because for the most part <laughs> until that boost kick in it is pretty much still bone stock you know uh, so the driving experience is it's gonna be for the most part the same as before you even got the kit put on you know what i mean it's it's not until you start getting on it and and you know that boost get in start kicking in until you okay like this is a different car at this point um and it really is completely different car you know when you need the the power okay we've got a little couple potholes here we we'll dodge those you know we don't need no flats I should have did this at a different time, man. There's so much traffic right now. You know, everybody's scrambling, get to work and whatnot. And I'm just out here messing around. You know. But yeah, even the idle. You know, as you can see, it. I doubt you can really hear it through the camera, but idle is completely normal. Like, uh, you know, rip. They got a good kit, man, and then, you know, shout out to Rusty Knuckle Garage, uh, who are the guys that actually installed my kit. They did the tuning, uh, did a really good job on it. So if you're in Southeast Louisiana, by some chance, you plan on getting you a RIP Supercharger, my recommendation would be Rusty Knuckle Garage in Slidell, Louisiana, because they did a really good job on mine. And uh, I have no complaints, as I've said, you know. You know. Oh, yeah, she can get sideways. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this thing, man. Like, um... Which is so crazy, because I think about like whenever we actually do the Hellcat swap at how crazy that's gonna be. You know, uh, with, I don't know what a, I would imagine a Hellcat is getting at least what, six, I don't know, 630 to 650 to the fucking wheels or some shit, man. Six something to the wheels. You know, so we talking about a 200 horsepower difference from this, like, I know that thing, that's nuts, you know. Shout out to everybody with a Hellcat, man. That's crazy. Like, uh, I still have, I haven't driven a Hellcat yet, man. Uh, haven't driven one. But I could imagine uh, how it is to ride in one of those. Like, I, I completely understand that hype, you know. Again, my car only makes 442 horsepower to the wheels so like i completely understand that hype and and why the hellcat is what it is you know in in the car community like that thing is a staple man so
charged 3.6 pentastar. You want my honest opinion? I say get one. Truly believe you'll be satisfied with the amount of power you can get from this setup. And again, we haven't even went crazy with it yet. Like, uh, we haven't put the, the, the lightweight pulleys on yet. The crank pulley and the alternator pulley. Like, still a, a ton we can do. The ported, um, upper and lower. We, we, we haven't done any of that stuff yet. You know what I mean? And we're at 442 as it sits right now. So, you think we do those things, upgrade that fuel pump, injectors and get this thing on E85 and it'll be a problem it'll be a big problem so that's the goal uh, that's what we're gonna do get all that done before we uh, we get this completely out of there but, uh, but yeah man if, if more power is what you want out of your 3.6 sorry about the wind Rip Supercharger is the way to go. I 100% recommend this to anyone looking for more power out of this thing. So, that's all I got, man. I hope you all enjoyed today's upload. If you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button. There'll be more content to come. In the meantime, I'm out. You know.